Jupiter's moon Europa is often said to be one of the most promising spots in our solar system to look for extraterrestrial life, due to huge subsurface oceans that lie beneath an icy crust. When we look at this moon, the most obvious things that we see are these enormous ridges that carve their way across the entire face of the moon, scarring this Jovian lunar landscape. Until now, we had no idea what caused them, but we might have recently found the answer in Greenland. The European surface is slashed all over by these brownish ridges, and until recently, we didn't know where they came from. Now, thanks to a chance discovery of a similar ridge in the northwest of Greenland, we have a pretty compelling theory that might explain them. The explanation actually has some interesting consequences too, because it suggests Europa is a lot more dynamic than we previously thought. It's easy to picture this moon as a solid, unchanging shell of ice, with an ocean deep beneath it, and a solid rocky mantle below that. This is a pretty static image of the moon, but this newfound dynamic behaviour is key for increasing the chances of finding life in these oceans, because as well as possible vents spewing minerals into the oceans from below, we now think it's possible to transfer minerals from the surface of the moon into the oceans. This is especially useful because Europa's lunar neighbour Io is often erupting all sorts of nutritious things into space, and these can make their way onto the surface of Europa. And now we think they can also make it down to the oceans as well, possibly seeding and feeding new life. However, the characteristic double ridges, two elevated peaks with a trough between them, are surprisingly hard to form, geologically speaking. There was no standout leading theory. Until now, by chance, an incredibly similar double ridge was found in Greenland, which by the way is a lot icier than the name suggests, while scientists were conducting some work on climate change. The joy is that it's much easier to study things in Greenland than it is on the Jovian moon Europa. This means we can quickly gain a better insight into the formation of the ridge here, and the similarity of the features lets us postulate that a similar formation mechanism might be at play on Europa. Using ground penetrating radars on the Greenland ridge showed researchers that below that ridge there's a pool of water, likely sourced by melting ice during the summertime running into a crack in the surface ice, and this pool sits on top of a layer of impenetrably hard ice. Over time, that pool of water freezes, and water has this weird property that when it freezes, it actually expands. Most fluids shrink when they freeze, but water molecules line up nicely in a crystal structure in ice, and it causes the ice to have more volume than the water that made it. The water in the initial crack also freezes, causing a nice hard plug to form. The ice above this pool and around the plug is much more porous, and hence as the ice freezes below it, it's forced upwards, slowly creating the two ridges either side of the solid ice plug that stays as the trough in the middle of the double ridge. This process repeats and repeats as the water and ice thaws and refreezes, and voila, big ol' ridge! I should say that the Greenland Ridge was actually spotted a fair few years ago, but the paper on the relationship with Europa has only just been published, so I like to think I'm not really years late with this. When you then take into account the different gravities of Greenland and Europa, the ridges are actually incredibly similar in terms of the ratio of the heights of the two peaks and the width of the trough in the middle, although the ones on Europa are way way bigger, stretching hundreds of kilometres long and they're much taller than the Greenland example. The Greenland example is nowhere near that big, and on Europa, these things are obviously way more common as well. However, the similarities are convincing enough for us to think that they could form in pretty much the same way. The one difficulty is the fact that there isn't much surface water to drain into the ice and form underground pools on Europa. So the hope is that some of the water from the huge European oceans is able to make its way upwards to form the pools needed. This isn't a totally crazy idea either, as there's a lot of water under the surface of Europa. We actually think more water than there is on the surface of Earth. This might seem like it wouldn't form a double ridge, because there's no crack for the ice to freeze into a hard column and form that trough in the middle. However, we do expect the icy surface of Europa to crack a lot due to the pretty extreme tidal forces it feels from the enormous gravitational pull of Jupiter, which is very close by and it pulls Europa from different angles as the moon orbits the planet 
causing stretching and squashing of the moon. This makes it more and more likely that the water pools could fill up from the ocean below and also have a crack above them that they can use to form these double ridges. The next exciting step in the story is the launch of the Europa Clipper mission, scheduled for 2024, which is a dedicated probe to go and study this fascinating moon of Jupiter. Unfortunately, it won't actually arrive at the moon until 2030, but it is taking a radar instrument capable of penetrating the 20 kilometer or so thick ice that covers Europa. And we're hoping it might see evidence of these underground pools, and it could support this formation route for the huge ridges. Whether we'll actually see evidence of aquatic life, either simple or complex life, is a completely different story. It might depend on how many minerals leak into the oceans from vents on the seafloor, and how much gunk gets filtered down through the ice from the surface. Jupiter also gives off a lot of radiation thanks to its very strong magnetic field, which can create even more complex molecules on the surface, which might then filter down and feed the oceans too. All very exciting, but we'll have to wait and see what happens in the coming years and wait to see what we learn about this awesome ocean moon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed a look at what I think is a pretty cool and unexpected link between a moon of Jupiter and Greenland. Shoot me any questions you have down below and subscribe if you're new. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!